From the dawn of creation, the history of our universe has been one of violent conflict, a chaotic clash of opposing forces vying to dominate the void. The very elements of nature itself are in constant upheaval, an eternal combat of opposites. Light against darkness, heat against cold, motion against inertia. And on the world of humankind, the awesome struggle of good against evil, the conflict between love and malevolence. In Transylvania stands a sinister castle, a fortress shelter of evil and death. The lord of this castle is the tragic and terrifying personification of the cruel conflict between the affirmation of life and the corruptions of death. Condemned to exist eternally, unliving but undead, and tormented by mortal passions, he is known as Dracula. Driven from his native Europe by the relentless pursuit of an organization of vampire hunters, Count Dracula fled to the United States of America, seeking to hide himself in the city of Boston. His was not the only evil presence in this city, for amongst the mortals there was a group who practiced secret dark deeds. They met in a church, but their form of worship was an unholy desecration. I hope you'll forgive us for being late to the service, Master, but our car got tied up in a traffic jam. No excuses! You know we can't begin the service until you've carved the altar, so bring your tools here and get to work. Tonight we give a bride to Satan. Disciples of Lucifer, hear me! Tonight we invoke the living presence of our master himself! We beseech the Lord of Darkness to rise from hell and accept our sacrifice! We pray the maiden we have chosen to present to him shall be found worthy! Now let the invocation begin! Almighty Lucifer, hear and grant the plea of your people! Appear before us and accept our worship! Abaddon, Beelzebub, Baal, Mephistopheles! Thou, whose name is legend, come forth, we humbly entreat thee. Almighty Satan, commander of the forces of evil, praise and be thy name. Almighty Satan, Lord of the babies, we beseech thee to appear and accept our humble sacrifice. Come forth, almighty master of our souls, appear and accept our worship. Almighty Master of our souls, appear and accept our worship. Lucifer, come forth. Gashando, Hakamanita, Semeni, Semena. Gashando, Hakamanita, Hasanini, Gashando. 
Satan who received a bride this night, it was Dracula who bore the woman Dolores away from the devil worshippers. High above the city, on the leathery wings of a giant vampire bat, the intended bride of Lucifer was stolen away. Beautiful Dolores had aroused the unholy desires of Dracula, and he intended to claim her for himself. She would be his for all eternity. He would make her immortal like himself. She would be released from the restricting bonds of mortal life, and she would be his forever. creature such as I to feel such a tender emotion as love. It can't be. But I must have blood. I can't. But I must have blood.
disgusting. I shouldn't show stuff like that on the air. That woman had to be crazy walking through that neighborhood late at night all by herself. Sure was a pretty woman. What kind of a loony creep would want to kill her? He had long, pointy teeth, like some sort of wolf or something. And he had these big red eyes, and then he bit her on the neck. Uh, uh. Bite marks were found on the woman's neck. And can you tell us what happened next, sir? Ah, uh, it was off. Sucks her butt. Like this. Oh. <laughs> and then the man turned into a bat. He, he grew wings like a bat and he flew away. The eyewitness, we learned, has a 30-year history of alcoholic hallucinations. Police place no credence in his story. He was taken to a sanitarium for treatment. And then... <laughs> Sounds like a vampire movie. Yeah, don't laugh. That guy could be telling the truth. Come on, you mean you believe in vampires? You should pay my alimony. That old bat I was married to is a real bloodsucker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Somebody here wants to talk to you, Frank. Thanks, Al. Hello, this is Frank Drake. Mr. Drake, I'm calling for someone who needs to see you about a very important matter. Could you please meet us by the flower bed at the entrance of the park? It's quite urgent. You better tell me who you are and what you want first, because I'm not partial to mystery meetings with perfect strangers. I can't explain over the phone. Too bad. You got a nice voice, and I'm curious about your looks. But it's just like I've been saying, Frank Drake isn't into mysteries, Buttercup. But Mr. Drake, or may I call you Mr. Dracula? Huh? What's that? So you think my name is Dracula, huh? Well, I don't know what kind of a game it is you think you're playing here. I assure you, young man, I am not playing games, nor am I here to threaten you. But let's get one thing straight right now. I have made it my business to trace your ancestry, and I know you are a direct descendant of Count Dracula of Transylvania. Uh... Your ancestor was Dracula's first son, born before the Count became a vampire, so you were spared that evil curse. Spared, was I? I still have to carry the name of that evil monster, Dracula, and all the memories attached to it. If you truly hate Dracula, you will join me as a hunter whose whole life is dedicated to tracking him down and liquidating him. Well, how about it? <laughs> You're out of your ever-loving skull. If you think you got a chance against the likes of Count Dracula, you've got another thing coming. As for me joining you, I got two words for you. Goodbye. <laughs> Oh. What are you doing? Hey, knock it off! Hey, hey! What are you, crazy? You? What's the big idea, huh? You're lucky I didn't kick your skull in, you old fool. You've got some explaining to do. My research on you disclosed that you were a master of martial arts, but I needed to test the level of your proficiency for myself in order to decide if you were qualified to be a vampire hunter. Huh? You must be joking. Jeez, you must have every book ever written about vampires, werewolves, zombies, and black magic stuff. I wrote a few of them myself. 
Hey, you're really serious about all this stuff, aren't you? Deadly serious, Frank. Deadly serious. I'm a professor of science and philosophy with many years of deep research in metaphysics. I assure you, Mr. Uh, Drake, I know what I'm doing. Okay, I'm impressed. But I'm still not convinced that you have any idea what you're up against. No disrespect, sir, but you can't even imagine how dangerous a real vampire can be. I can't, eh? Let me tell you a story, son. to destroying him than those two brave men. One was my father, Jonathan Harker. The other was Rachel's grandfather, Abraham Van Helsing. Well, I guess I understand now why the two of you became vampire hunters. But where do I fit in? It's your chance to clear your name and earn the gratitude of all mankind. How about it? <laughs> the gratitude of all mankind, you say? <laughs> Let's see now. At current market rates, with my good name plus the gratitude of all mankind, I might be able to buy a cup of coffee, but I doubt it. You want money? In here is a check for $100,000. Hmm. That's more money than I made all last week. But I'm afraid it's still not quite enough for me to risk my life for. Bye. <clears throat> oh. hey, how about tossing her in as a bonus? Oh! Hmm. oh. Now! Hey! Oh! Quit it! Come on! What are you... Ah! Oh! Whoa. Oh, hey, don't oh. get crazy now. Huh? If you ever try a trick like that again, I'll put an arrow right through your heart. You understand me? You made your point, honey. We'll forget about the bonus and I'll just take the hundred thousand bucks, okay? Ah! Now that I've joined your little team of fearless vampire hunters, maybe you can tell me how you propose to track Dracula down. All right. Huh? Elijah was raised in a church until they caught him drinking the holy water. I don't get it. What can he do? Elijah's nose is an unerring radar, incredibly sensitive to the scent of evil. We can depend on him to lead us to Count Dracula wherever he may be hiding. Even with his unholy powers, Dracula can't fool or confuse Elijah. You may accept my assurance that finding Dracula will be no problem. Somehow, the thought of finding Dracula doesn't reassure me an awful lot. I have a feeling that when we find Dracula, that's when our real problems will just be starting. How do you feel about that, Elijah? I don't understand it. Satan seemed pleased with the bride we offered him. But now he ignores us. Almighty oh, Prince of Darkness, hear the voice of thy faithful servant on earth. Why have you abandoned your disciples? Why do you ignore our sacrifices? How have we offended thee, O Satan? Master, hear your priest. I invoke you by name. Abaddon, 
Bar, Beelzebub, Lucifer, I command your presence, Almighty One. Come forth! Satan, come forth! <laughs> Mortal, how dare you command the presence of Satan? No! Be gone! Why are you angry? Tell me, I have faithfully followed your every instruction. When you asked for the woman Dolores, I gave her as an offering. You imbecile! You permitted my intended bride to be stolen away right under your nose by that imposter, Count Dracula! Impossible! Count Dracula! <sighs> Such a desecration! Help us to avenge ourselves, Master! This abomination cannot be forgiven! We shall leave no stone unturned until we find Dracula and destroy him! Patience, mortal! When the time is right, we'll fix Count Dracula! What do you mean? How long do we have to wait to get our revenge? I have a very special sort of revenge plan for our dear friend, Count Dracula. I promise a revenge more cruel than you can imagine, but you are not to move against Dracula for one year, understand? I hear and I obey. Count Dracula, beware! A revenge more cruel than I can imagine. What could that possibly be? While Satan's disciples ponder his words, a smaller but equally determined group is not waiting to press their pursuit of Dracula. Pledged to find and destroy the monster wherever he may be, however long it may take, the vampire hunters press relentlessly onward. On Christmas Eve of that year, a child was born. Dolores gave birth to Janus, the son of Dracula. How much longer do you intend to go on with this hopeless wild goose chase? Are you aware an entire year has gone by? And we're no closer to finding Count Dracula than we were the day we started. And you know what? Your unerring and infallible flea bag there is a total, complete washout. You're not making matters any better by complaining all the time and blaming poor Elijah because Dracula has somehow managed to escape being detected by disappearing. 
There's been a significant change in Dracula's life of late. He used to murder boldly and never bothered to cover his tracks, but now he's acting more cautiously. Hey, do you suppose that means we're closing in on him? And maybe we've got him scared? Could be. We are closing in. I've narrowed down the scope of his possible hiding places, and I'm certain he's within this area. Then I guess we haven't just been wasting our time. Mm. We're closing the noose around his neck, little by little, day by day, Frank. And now we must prepare ourselves for the confrontation. We will soon have his whereabouts pinpointed. He's within our reach, and heaven help us, we're within his reach. Elijah has proved his worth by telling us where Dracula wasn't. Now he can finish his job by showing us where he is. Right, Elijah? <laughs> What a beautiful boy. What a beautiful, brave, cheerful, and worthy son I have. Such a good boy, my son. And now you must go to bed and get your sleep, so you'll grow up big and strong. Hmm? Dolores, there's a shameful secret about myself which I have kept hidden from you all this time. How could you possibly keep a secret from me, darling? While it's true I am not a mortal man, I am not your beloved Lucifer, Lord of Darkness, whom you and your fellow disciples worship at the Black Mass. I lied to you. My true identity is revealed in the mirror. You see, I am a vampire. I am not Satan. I am a victim of him who made me this loathsome creature, hated and feared by all mankind. I don't hate you, Dracula. What? I knew the moment our eyes met you weren't Satan. There's just too much love in your eyes. I saw the torment also. Anyone who is capable of such tender feelings could not possibly be Satan. If you knew this, why did you marry me? In you, I saw hope for myself. Oh, darling, there is an awesomely powerful bond of love between us that can transform us completely from evil to good. With love, together we can conquer Satan. Darling. I want to tell you about the man I used to be before I became the cursed slave of Satan. I come from a titled family, from a kingdom in the Balkans, Transylvania. The territory over which I ruled was small, but fertile and beautiful. My life was dedicated to protecting it. It was a bountiful land. The climate was ideal. The soil was rich, the air was clean. Water was plentiful from clear mountain streams that flowed through the valley. My people prospered, and they were loyal in their allegiance to me, for I was a generous and compassionate ruler. We were high-thinking, happy, peace-loving people, content with what we had. We offered no threat to any of our neighbors. But we were fearless in defense of what was ours. Countless times I led my army into battle to ward off invaders seeking to take our land by force. We repelled the Bulgarians, the Hungarians, and the Barbarian Hun, Attila the Great. Time and again, the Barbarians rode against us. Time and again, we defeated them. But they always returned to try again. Desperate to convince them of the futility of the slaughter, I adopted my own savage method. I skewered the bodies of the invaders and scattered them about the surrounding countryside as a horrible warning to potential future enemies. I shuddered at my own action, but it spoke to the barbarians in a language that they understood. The strategy worked. Enemies lost their fighting spirit and retreated at the grisly sight of my signposts of death. I had become a butcher in pursuit of peace, and my soul was irrevocably tarnished. I became the target of hatred on all sides, and every warrior who rode against me burned with vengeance. Enemies joined forces with the sole purpose of destroying me. And they succeeded. <laughs> and so perished the mortal Count Dracula in an ocean of my own blood. Oh, if only that could be the end of my story.
my blood-smeared earthly reputation had caught the attention of Satan himself. I was raised from my grave by his evil power. Neither living nor dead, I was his slave. And thus were my mortal sins on earth rewarded, condemned to exist eternally as the prince of vampires. For 500 years I have fed my insatiable bloodlust and the name Dracula has become a horrifying abomination to mankind. Formerly a symbol of hope, the cross became for me a source of terror, and I shrank from the reminder of the eternal damnation which it represented to me and to all vampires. As Europeans learned too much about my habits and vulnerabilities, I was forced to flee my native land. I journeyed to a land where the people thought stories about vampires were just silly superstition. Americans seemed more concerned about worldly material things than about spiritual matters. I discovered the Black Mass cult soon after my arrival in Boston, and I overheard their plan to present a bride to Satan. It was my chance for revenge. On the night appointed for the offering, I hastened to the church of Satan's disciples. My plan was simple and cruel. I would steal Satan's bride and destroy her. Then I saw you, and all my plans were forgotten. As you knelt before me in obedient submission and your eyes met mine, I knew I must have you for my own. My need for you overwhelmed my need for revenge. With one bite, I could give you immortality, and you would be mine for all eternity. But a strange force gripped me and would not let me carry out my purpose. What is this power? Only now do I realize what that force was. I, the Prince of Vampires, the Lord Sovereign of the Damned, had fallen in love with a mortal woman. Now I behold the result of a beloved son, Janus. My frozen heart burns like a torch. Love and joy were just words describing long-forgotten emotions until I found you and regained my ability to feel them. I too had lost my humanity. That's why I offered myself to be Satan's bride. I had felt unloved and unwanted all my life until that moment our eyes met. You opened a whole new world to me simply by caring and by showing me that you cared. You made me feel alive and special. When we were together, you never took your eyes off me. And when we talked, you spoke to me, not at me. And you cared what I thought. No woman could ever feel more loved, more cherished than you have made me feel every moment we've been together. Such a man could not possibly be all evil. I know how you suffer, my darling. My heart suffers with you. But our love is worth suffering for. Oh, my love. Darling. <laughs> Mortal! Mortal! <gasps> A long awaited and long cherished time for revenge against Count Dracula has now arrived. Wonderful. Command me, Master, and you will find me eager and obedient. Go! It's a message from the disciples of Satan, darling. I wonder what it could be. Ah, 
We hail the birth of your Satan-sent child, and we shall gather tonight for the purpose of baptizing your beloved Janus into the fellowship of the Black Mass. This ceremony will place your son under the protection of Satan and will render him safe from all harm. I'm frightened, darling. That priest is a vengeful person who can't be trusted. <laughs> Don't worry. I can handle that old phony. But the protection that they offer could prove to be very valuable to Janus. Boy, I've never seen Elijah get so excited. I think he's definitely picking up the scent. Oh, I've waited a long time for this moment, Dracula. Don't let anger override caution, child. This is very dangerous business. Oh, what are you two so uptight about? He's just another boogeyman. I can handle him easy. in his heart, and my grandfather will be avenged. Not yet. Why? We can't afford any slip-ups at this point. I want to know who that woman is. And I'm very curious about that baby. Could it be Dracula's child? We'll see. Follow them, Frank. here. Was that invitation just a cruel joke? Settle down and quit panicking or we'll lose control of the situation and play right into Dracula's hands as so many before us have done. Just be calm, keep your eyes open and we'll see how the situation develops. No! Stop! Stop! Ah! Ah! I can't stand it! Stop! Dracula stands convicted of sacrilege in that you did fraudulently assume Satan's name and that you did steal his bride, Dolores. Prepare to die! You fool! Put down that gun! You're endangering my wife and child! You hear me? Drop it right now! I command you to obey! You're wasting your time if you think your puny bullets can harm Count Dracula! Don't be too certain of your immortality, Dracula! Lord Lucifer, who gave you eternal life, also has the power to destroy that life. He instructed me to load the gun with silver bullets. Hey, silver! And you have no power to force me to drop the gun. Look around you, Dracula. Uh... Oh, oh, oh. 
Will you allow the murder of an innocent child? Well, I'll destroy this temple with my bare hands. Oh. Ah, this might well be our chance. Get ready. Oh. Go. Oh. Ah. Good Lord. Come on. Attack Elijah. Frank, move in and try to throw him down so we can drive a stake through his heart. by Limited Express lies the largest city in the Western Hemisphere, the teeming metropolis of New York City. about such a thing. <laughs> I don't know what you mean. I was being serious. Quit that. 
Be a nice guy, will you? Okay, come on now. What? You better not play games with me or I'll bite a hole in your neck and suck your blood out. Remember, I'm the big, bad, bloodthirsty vampire. <laughs> don't! You're scaring me! <laughs> ah, don't be uptight. Come on, give me a kiss. <laughs> What's happening? I don't believe it! Meet the real big bad vampire! The real vampire? <laughs> Meanwhile, back in Boston, at the home of Hans Harker... Those New York murders are quite intriguing. It sounds like Dracula's work, all right. I guess he must have gone insane with rage because of the death of his baby. At any rate, there's one thing for sure. Those New York murders are definitely the work of a vampire. Mm, I don't think we should just assume that it's Dracula who committed all those New York murders. He isn't the world's only vampire, you know. You probably have a good point there, Rachel. And we shouldn't jump to conclusions and make assumptions where Dracula is concerned. Because he could be hiding out right under our noses, right here in Boston. I've noticed that Elijah doesn't seem restless or in any hurry to leave here. Our best bet is to keep an eye on Dracula's wife. I've been keeping tabs on her. She visits the baby's grave every day and she still seems to be in a state of shock. I feel sorry for her. She's had to endure so much tragedy in her lifetime. You must harden your heart. Remember, we must destroy her husband. He seems to be more genuinely devoted to his wife than any husband I've ever heard of, Hans. I don't think he'd abandon her without ever trying to see her again. We all seem to be in agreement then. If we keep our eye on her, Dracula's bound to show up sooner or later. Baby, I just can't believe that you've been taken away from me forever. I see you so clearly, and I hear your sweet voice in all my dreams, and in my every waking thought as well. How he Good loved boy, you. How happy we were together. Now that I've lost you both, I can't go on. Forgive me, my darling Janus, but I can't go on. No! Janus. Frank, Rachel, try to stop her. Oh! <gasps> Thou shalt not take thy life, Dolores. Heaven forgive me, but without Dracula or Janus, I have no reason or desire to live. Have mercy on me and allow me to end the unbearable misery I've brought upon myself by turning my back on heaven and offering myself to the black forces of evil. I regret ever having been born into such a life of wickedness and suffering. You have sinned, and you have therefore suffered greatly. But heaven has never turned its back on you. You shall be granted a second opportunity. It's the heavenly light of revival. 
It's coming from the cemetery. What's the meaning of this? Shining directly over the place where Janus is buried. Now I understand it. The enemy is going to bring him back to life in an attempt to bring about my downfall by making me confront my own son in a test of his heavenly powers against the black powers given to me by Satan. I must stop it. Janus? Oh, Janus. He moved. He's breathing. My baby, my baby. Come, let me hold you in my arms. Janus. <laughs> huh? Son, Janus. Yes, it is, Mother. Oh, darling Janus, it is you. I don't understand it, but I know it's true. My loving heart recognizes you. Oh, no! Janus! You have been revived solely for the purpose of destroying your own father! <laughs> Janus, he's your father. That poor, tortured, and tormented creature deserves your mercy. Is he not the vampire Dracula, servant of Satan? Yes is more a victim than a willing servant of Satan, my son. He did not choose to be a vampire, and you must not blame him. Mother, I have to kill him. Kill your father? I have no choice in this matter. That's why I was revived. But he loves you so much. I am only doing what I was created to do, Mother. I have no choice. That's it. Try to understand. It's not my choice to do this thing any more than it was his willing choice to be a slave of Satan. You're both helpless, then, aren't you? He is the personification of evil, and I am the personification of goodness. We are mortal enemies by our nature. Well then, does this mean it is my fate to be the personification of hopeless suffering? To look on helplessly while my son and my husband struggle to destroy one another? Is this the punishment heaven has chosen for me? I have to do it, Mother. And it isn't a matter of revenge and punishment. It's only justice. Oh, Janus, he loves you so. No child ever had a more devoted father, and he has suffered so much. Five hundred years of hatred and torment. Oh, Janus, can't anything be done to stop this? Please? <laughs> I'm sorry, Mother. Janus, wait! Please! Janus! Excuse me. Were you speaking to me? I hate to intrude upon your grief, but I must have a word with you. What is it you want? My name is Hans Harker, and I have some rather distressing information about your husband's past, which I think you should know. I know everything about my husband's past. He has never kept secrets from me. Then no doubt he told you that he brutally murdered my father and my wife and my daughter as well. <gasps> the man is a vampire, a vile monster. He's a demon from hell whose total life is dedicated to committing horrible obscenities upon all mankind. 
I have vowed upon my sacred honor that I will destroy him. Your noble purpose has already been accomplished. My purpose will not be accomplished, madam, until Count Dracula is dead. My poor, tormented husband, Dracula, has been virtually dead from the moment heaven revived Janus, Mr. Harker. It's only a matter of time before he kills his father. You seem to be a warm and compassionate human being. Why in the world would a woman like you want to marry such an evil monster as Dracula? And how can you go on defending him, knowing full well what he is? My husband didn't request to become a vampire. That was the work of Satan. The torments he suffered were far worse than those he inflicted, believe me. He was a compassionate human, and he struggled to overcome the curse of the vampire, which compelled him to commit those abominable murders. His very soul is a tormented battlefield of good striving against evil, love against hate. All my life I pined for love and affection because my mother died when I was a baby and my father was a cold and uncaring man concerned only about wealth and position. So I abandoned myself to a wild and reckless life. I pursued adventure and novelty as substitutes for love and peace of mind. I was eager to try any sort of distraction that might help me to forget the gnawing emptiness inside me. I joined the cult of the Black Mass because I was lonely and craved for a sense of belonging, a feeling of kinship with others, however foolish they might be. I agreed to become the Bride of Satan as a lark because I didn't truly believe in the occult. Little did I suspect that in that evil environment I would find the love I had sought all my life. I'm wasting my breath. You only understand hate and vengeance. must have blood! No more, Father. Heaven will not allow you to murder another. You must never call me father again, my exalted, heaven-sent, murder-bent, mortal enemy. You're no longer my son, Janus. You're right. It will make it much easier for me to destroy you if I forget that you're my father. It would not be wise for you to underestimate the powers I possess, Janus. I shall show you how I have managed to survive for 500 years! <laughs> <laughs> inherit some of my powers and that must be why you were revived so you could use my own powers against me but you haven't seen the full extent of the powers of Dracula and fought, and one or both of them could be dead. Oh, my husband and my baby.
Speak to me. Speak. Uh, I'm all right. Oh. Dracula, who brought me here? Someone who knew this was the best possible way to bring me out. <laughs> <laughs> It's been 500 years since we last met, my dear Count Dracula. I trust all goes well with you. <laughs> Satan Lucifer, Prince of Darkness, Lord of the Underworld, as your sovereign of all damned souls, I command you now to appear before me! <laughs> it is I who command you here to face judgment. Oh, darling. Don't worry. Satan, I demand to know what this is all about. you home, dear Count. <gasps> Your time of ruin is at hand, noble Dracula. <gasps> Get on with it. <laughs> Do your worst, Satan. I'm ready. Why did you turn against your master, slave? I served you well. You have betrayed me and given comfort to my enemy, you ungrateful wretch. For this you will pay dearly. You shall feel the unholy wrath of Satan Lucifer. The woman you stole is nothing to me, but you blaspheme by loving her. Love is the vilest transgression possible in the eyes of Satan, and as my servant you are expressly forbidden to love anyone, yet you and this woman did love one another. And from your love there came a child of heaven. Hear me now, Lord Lucifer. Do what you will with me, but leave the woman out of this and let her go free at once, you hear? <laughs> Why should I do that? You flatter yourself in the belief that the child inherited his powers from you, but in reality it was this mortal woman, his mother, who gave him the awesome power which threatens my very empire now. Huh? Power? Power? I'm just an ordinary mortal. I have no special powers. You must be mistaken. No mistake. You have it. An awesome power. You aren't aware of it, but once you gain control of this faculty, you'll want to use it for the good of mankind, and that could destroy centuries of my evil work on Earth. I destroy you, Dracula, for punishment, but I must destroy the woman because she is so exceedingly dangerous. No, Satan, I will not permit you to destroy her precious life. I will oppose you, and somehow I will find the power to prevent your bringing harm to my wife. Great words won't stop me from deposing my just punishment on you.
You've just seen a ghost or something. Even stranger. We just saw Count Dracula and he walked right past us calm as a cucumber. Elijah didn't react to him either. That is strange. Does that mean he's not a vampire anymore? That hardly seems likely. I've never heard of it. What do you think, Frank? Wait till you hear the rest of it. We followed him all the way downtown and watched him get on a train to New York City. New York City? This bears watching. Are you certain? He's gone to New York City? Dracula discovered that Satan had taken away his magical powers and it made him an ordinary mortal man again. He's gone to New York in hopes of finding the vampire Layla, whose venomous bite could restore him. Otherwise, he will die at any time now. Oh, is there no end to the suffering? I realize I can't persuade you to change your mind and go against the will of heaven. It's just that when I think of you killing your own father... What? All will be well, Mother. Millions of people inhabit New York City, but only one can help Count Dracula. Layla the Vampire, whose bite can restore his immortality. Tired and famished with a hunger of 500 years, Dracula desperately needs money for food. He sees his chance. Give me your money! In my pocket! <coughs> Come on, I can't breathe! You're killing him! <coughs> Stop! Come back here! After him! Has it come to this that I've become a common thief in the streets? seen it with my own eyes, I wouldn't believe it. Count Dracula, sovereign of all vampires, exhibiting an apparent hunger for ordinary mortal food. And you're right about Elijah no longer reacting to him, which indicates he has lost his evil aura. Now's our chance to kill him if he's lost his powers. We have no justification to kill him if he isn't a vampire. We could all be arrested and convicted of murder. Silver or gold. That's Layla, all right. I see she's a redhead these days. some wine in the refrigerator. Okay if I open it and pour us a drink, babe? Sure, you go ahead and pour yourself one. But I don't drink wine. Right. Huh? Hey, I don't know who you are, buddy, but you better have a pretty good reason for busting in here. dinner, and he's R.H. positive, too. 
So, what brings you around after all these years and years and years and years? Layla, I had a run-in with Satan, and as a result, he took away all my powers and made me a mortal man again. A mortal man, you say? Very interesting. It looks good on you. You must help me, Layla. Yeah, I definitely like you this way. Except for your wardrobe. Layla, please. So you want to be a vampire again. Glad to be of service. So, come to me, Dracula. Thanks. No, Layla! You dare come to me for help when you were the one who betrayed me and turned me into a vampire, making my existence into a living hell. No, Layla! Stop, please! It'll be a car! I hope you'll make quick work of it, my loving son. I cannot harm you now that you're a mortal human being. I am empowered solely for the destruction of Lucifer's demons. I have seen that heavenly power. Your mother possesses it. It was awesome. Mm. You see what you face if you ever become a vampire again. I have to try. I can't face the thought of dying. Perhaps I'll find the answer in Transylvania. going to Transylvania to find another vampire to transform him. And if he's successful, we better be on hand. Forgive me for awaking you so early, Melissa. But I need your help immediately. Melissa, awake! Melissa! Count Dracula, at last you've come back to me. There's no time to explain, Melissa. I'm mortal and I must have the venom from your vampire fangs to restore me at once or I'm a dead man. Hurry! so funny, Melissa. You, Dracula! I won't do it! What? You dare disobey the command of your vampire master? You're no longer our master, Dracula, since you became a human being. We know you married a mortal woman and fathered a human baby. It was because of this that Satan took away your powers and your immortality, and he gave us a new master. New one? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not a bit sorry. You promised that I would be your wife, and then you abandoned me. Now I've promised to marry our new master, Sir Tomo. Tomo? How dare he call himself master? true master and I command you to hear me and disperse you will obey me you hear me stop stop it obey me
I can just make it. of the crosses you're wearing, and that's why they're not trying to come in after me. It's awful quiet all of a sudden. I'll see if they've gone away. Oh, no! your right to assume my title. My title was given to me by my patron, Lord Lucifer himself, when you betrayed him by committing yourself to a blasphemous marriage with a mortal woman. Enough talk. There's only one way to settle this. I challenge you to prove yourself worthy of usurping my title by facing me in combat. It will be a pleasure to have my followers witness your fall and humiliating defeat. On guard, Dracula! <laughs> Prepare to meet your death now! You're not even giving me any competition, you ridiculous mortal! I'll slaughter you!
Tyrants of vampires, we'll obey you. It's the mark of the cross. I didn't defeat him after all. It was the power of the cross that destroyed Tomo. I have been used as an instrument of heaven. Master. Now that he's lost all of his supernatural powers. Parker has a plan to get him in the castle, and we don't dare interfere with him, Rachel. Don't you remember what he told us at our last planning session this morning? Remember? Our promise. Yes. We have had no success with any of our weapons or strategy against Dracula so far. But I have a secret trump card which I'm ready to spring on him now. I can't divulge the details of my plan, but it's something I must do entirely on my own. You must not interfere. You can't take him on alone. Rachel's right, Hans. Whatever your plan is, we want to be in on it, too. I'm afraid I must insist that you trust me in this matter, and that you do exactly as I tell you, because if you don't, all of our efforts will have gone for nothing. Why are you looking at me as though you think I've gone insane? Oh, I assure you, life is very dear to me, even though I am just an old cripple. You needn't worry about me. All right. <clears throat> Good girl. Well, let's hope. Mm. What's this? <laughs> I have my fangs back again. Once more, I am master of vampires and Lord Sovereign of the Damned. It must be the air in my castle that restored me. Dracula. Huh? Hans Harker, I believe. What are you doing in my castle? After all this time, I finally have you, Count Dracula, and you'll not get away from me. I have come to avenge my murdered family. You've plagued my life for years, but now I'm going to be rid of you once and for all. <laughs> Just ending, Dracula. That spoke is made of pure silver. What? Silver? Ugh, I can't believe I've been so stupid as to be beaten so easily. Well, that's it, Dracula. I have dedicated my entire life to your destruction, and now my mission has been completed. Now, now Harker, we'll see who has won. We shall go to meet our judgment together. did it. Oh. <gasps> I'm sorry. You don't have to tell me, Janus. I already knew it. Dracula's gone. He's dead. <laughs> I know what a nightmare of suffering your life has been, Mother. But that's all in the past now, and you must try to make a new beginning. Oh, how can I think about a new beginning, Janus? There's nothing to live for anymore. I'll always be with you, and through me, he'll be with you as well. You represent the best of both of us, son. I know he's as proud of you as I am. You think so? Of course he is. What? Oh, Jane. There is something left to live for after all, my son, and we shall make a new beginning together. In Transylvania, crumbling ruins are all that remain of Count Dracula's castle, symbolic of the crumbled ruin of his mortal life on Earth. A once mighty fortress, fallen to rubble and decay. 
haunted by tragic memories of a once mighty warrior and leader fallen to the decadence and depravity of mortal sin. In the end, he was a man, inevitably destined to face the eventual fate of all men. But while death is the inescapable destiny of each mortal being, life itself is eternal, and mortal men live on in the memory of future generations. Their great deeds inspire others to greatness, and their evil deeds serve as a warning to all. The ultimate truth remains. Life and love are everlasting.